Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Once again, a very happy new year and I really hope that your new year started on a high note. So far in this lecture series, we have discussed how to solve the Navier-Stokes equation for a steady flow case. And having learned that using both the artificial compressibility method and simple algorithm, which you can check here if in case if you haven't checked it already. And now we would be shifting our attention to unsteady flow solvers. So although the case of unsteady flow problems, it's a huge field in itself. So these lectures would intend to give you a glimpse of how you can solve it using various kinds of algorithms. So in this lecture, we would be starting with artificial compressibility method and we would see how we can change our existing uh, scheme and the existing MATLAB codes so that you can solve them for an unsteady flow case. The lecture today would introduce the methodology of artificial compressibility method for the unsteady flow problems. And if you're interested in learning how you can write the MATLAB code for the same, uh, check out the next video, which would be released very shortly, where we would be going through the MATLAB counterpart. So without any further delay, let's get started. So if you recall, the fluid flow is governed using a continuity equation, which is written in this particular way, and a momentum equation. So this is the x momentum equation, and a similar equation can be written for the y direction. To solve these problems using the artificial compressibility method, we introduced an artificial compressibility into the continuity equation, and using that, we were able to solve for the pressure field. So if you don't recall that, go to the link here, which would take you through the artificial compressibility methodology. So we introduced a pressure derivative term in the continuity equation to solve for the pressure field. And also just for the sake of iterations, we introduced a time derivative term in the velocity. So this framework was adopted for the steady state flow problem. And we argued that on the steady state, both these derivatives would turn out to be zero and we would be able to solve the steady incompressible Navier-Stokes equations. So let's look at how the methodology would change for the unsteady flow problem. To solve the Navier-Stokes equation using the unsteady artificial compressibility method, we would be adding certain terms to these existing equations. And to give you an idea, we would be using two different kind of time steps here. One would be dt that would be linked to physical time and another would be called as tau that I would be calling as pseudo time or a dual time. And for that reason, this particular method is called as a dual time artificial compressibility method. So as I suggested, we would have a time variable called as t and another time variable that is called as tau. So this t represents the physical time or a, you can say it's a physical time domain and this t is called as the pseudo time which is not real but we would be using that to solve the unsteady case. So the way in which the equations are modified is the continuity equation is called as 1 over delta dp over d tau plus du over dx plus dv over dy being equals to zero. So the only change that you see here is that I've represented this time derivative with the pseudo time derivative. And I'll explain you very shortly what that would be doing. And in the momentum equation, which earlier was del u over del t plus u del u over del x plus v del u over del y being equals to the right hand side. So I'm calling this entire thing as right hand side. And what we add here is simply the pseudo time derivative of the u velocity, which is written as del u over del tau. So now the idea here is if you want to proceed from any time level, let us say t to t plus dt. So this is what I'm talking about physical time. So we want to advance the flow from a old time step to a new time step. And the idea here is that to do so, we don't jump directly, rather we take multiple increments in the pseudo time. So to go from t to t plus dt, we do the computations in pseudo time until the locally steady solution is achieved. So you remember, so this is, let us say t equals to zero. So we have some initial conditions here. So now let us say if the dt is 0 0.1, 
So rather than taking the entire step from 0 to 0 0.1, what we would do is we would locally uh, go in this pseudo time such that when we arrive at a pseudo steady solution that we would refer as the solution at time step of 0 0.1. So to illustrate that, let us say we had these as real time levels. So let us say this is T, this is T plus DT, this is T plus 2DT. So rather than jumping directly, what we do is we have these pseudo levels and these are also a lot of levels until you get some sort of steady solution within themselves and you can call this as if this is let us say an iteration of q then this would become q plus one and so on so the calculations here for every time step would be done in this pseudo time so if i want to represent this uh, physical time as an index of n then this becomes n plus 1 this becomes n plus 2 and similarly the pseudo time steps are represented as the q index so we would be using the index of n for the physical time and q for the pseudo time so please don't confuse both of these time steps because the n is where we are actually interested in so if somebody asks you what is the solution at say t equals to one second so you want to make sure that that time at n nth time step is corresponding to that one second whereas the pseudo time could be anything so pseudo time is not of practical importance it is only for the computational convenience so now let us look at how we can discretize the equations because now we know what the governing equations are so we would be able to discretize them as well before we go further these solutions would be obtained on a staggered grade arrangement and if you don't remember what they are go to the link here that would take you to the correct video so first let us look at the discretization for the continuity equation so we had one over delta del p over del tau plus del u over del x plus del v over del y equals to zero now if you notice the pressure derivative term is with respect to the pseudo time so it is natural that we can write that as p at q plus one minus p at q divided by tau and we have one over delta sitting outside then we had these two terms which is del u over del x plus del v over del y and the important thing is that these terms are to be evaluated at the qth time so you can take your staggered grid arrangement and discretize them in space and the important thing is that the u here would be at u at q time step and the v time step being equals to zero similarly we can look at various terms in the momentum equation so i'll rather go directly here in the momentum equation and we can write that the first term is simply u at q plus 1 minus u at q divided by tau and mind you that this is i comma j for both of them the next term is del u over del t so there are many ways in which you can write this term so i would be sticking to a very easier way here and of course that in case you find problems in your unsteady flow solver most likely it could be because of unsteady term that is the physical unsteady term in the momentum equation so contact me in case you uh, find problems but the uh, unsteady term we can simply write as un plus 1 minus un divided by dt and everything else because they are exactly the same as the previous case they would be evaluated and discretized the same way but the important part here is that they would be used at qth time step or qth pseudo time step actually so they are not evaluated at the nth time step or n plus one -th time step because the computations are being done in the pseudo time space that is why all the uh, spatial derivative, the pressure derivative or the diffusion or convection terms, they would be represented at the qth time step. So using that we would get the u at q plus 1 and similarly using the continuity equation we would get the p at q plus 1 and that is how we would keep doing the iterations until we get convergence in the pseudo time space. So I'll explain further as to how the computations are actually carried out. 
So let us say we start with a t equals to zero. That is physical time being equals to zero. So let us say we have a dt of 0.1 second. So remember that this is a physical time. So to jump from t equals to zero to t equals to 0.1, we would do iterations in pseudo time until we get the converged solutions. So iterations in the tau time domain. This is the pseudo time domain until you get the convergence. And once you get the convergence in pseudo time, then what we say is that u at n plus one, that is the u at 0.1 second, it is equals to u at q. So I would represent or I would assign the final pseudo time variables to the next physical time step variables. And similarly, we can proceed from t equals to 0.1 to 0.2 seconds. So for every pseudo time convergence, we would assign the physical time to the final value of that pseudo time. So you can think of that if you remember from the steady flow cases. So once you achieve the steady variables, then we would say that this is the variables at the next physical time step. I hope that by now you would have some idea of how you can write the code itself that you would have sort of two loops involved here. One would be for every physical time step and one would be for the convergence in the pseudo time steps. So usually the unsteady flow problems, they require you for the solutions at many time steps. When I say many time steps, I mean the many physical time steps. And for every physical time step, you need to converge your solution in the pseudo time. So that is how you can think about writing the codes. So I hope that uh, you will have some idea of how you can write the solver and hopefully the methodology would be clear now. Just to quickly summarize it up, for every physical time, we would do iterations in the pseudo time. If you face problem in getting a converged solution, I would recommend that you look at how you are discretizing the term because we are using a staggered grid arrangement. So it could become a little complicated to somehow do the bookkeeping. But if you get the terms right, I'm very sure that you will get the unsteady solution correctly. So in the next lecture, we would look at uh, our previous steady state MATLAB code and I would show you how we can convert it to the unsteady flow solver. So by that time, uh, I would recommend that you give it a shot as to how you can try that in MATLAB. And in case if you have any questions, feel free to write in the comments or you can also contact me via the telegram group. The link would be in the description. So until then, I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.